Hi, I'm here at the Cable Next Gen Conference, and I've got Mike with, from Calix with me. Hello. Mike, what do you see beyond 10G PON? There's a couple of options, you know, in the industry uh, beyond 10 gig PON technology. Uh, one is 25 GS PON. It's not a standard. It's, uh, it's more of an industry uh, consortium. And then the other uh, technology is 50 gig PON technology, ITUT, 50 gig PON technology. Um, so uh, of the two technologies, um, we see that 50 gig uh, PON technology will meet all of the use cases uh, that the operators are thinking they'll, they'll need over the life of this next generation PON technology. And if you look at the capacity increase from the current generation of PON technology, which is XGS, uh, which is uh, 10 gig, but really it's about 8.5 gig. To go to 25 gig, it's really 21 gig. Um, you know, it's just not that much of a leap uh, in capacity to really justify the operators and really overall ecosystem um, investment. So that's why you know the operators are looking at 50 gig. If we look through history uh, of PON technology, going back 25 years, you know, A PON to B PON mm -hmm. to G PON to XGS and now 50 gig, they've all seen about a four times increase with each iteration of PON technology. So we see that 50 gig really is that next generation leap, you know, for beyond Sounds 10 like gig. Sounds like that's what you're kind of encouraging our customers to um, consider. And, and they're all, yes, we are, and then they're also bringing to their bringing us their use cases, wow. and we're working on traffic models with them and some of the use cases that they can. Um, previously, they weren't using PON technology for, like for example, high-end enterprise, uh, mobile X haul, overall transport services. These are all all technologies that can uh, be enabled with 50 gig PON technology. Oh, that's great. Yeah. How can cable accelerate the adoption of ITU-based PON technology? The cable industry um, can accelerate uh, the deployment of PON technology by leveraging their existing back office systems. Uh, so those back office systems are going to be everything from provisioning, mm -hmm. uh, network management systems, network management systems that uh, their network operations centers will use mm -hmm. uh, to monitor the overall health of the network, and also the customer care organizations. So think about whenever you call the customer care organization um, and you wonder, you know, where's the outage? Or the customer care can leverage their existing tools by deploying an ITUT-based PON technology that has a DOCSIS PON adaptation mm -hmm. layer. And what that does is it allows the entire cable back office systems to be leveraged while deploying ITUT-based PON technology. Once you have this DOCSIS PON adaptation layer, it takes the communication, all those standardized interfaces that have, that have been used right. in the cable industry for 20, 25 years, and it mediates them to the ITUT PON protocols and specifications. So it really abstracts the legacy DOCSIS back office systems that are all standardized to the, a new technology that they would be deploying. It sounds like pretty seamless from what it you're really describing. It really is. Uh, yeah, uh, we can turn up services for an operator very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they don't have to reinvent any of those processes, any of those systems. It just adds a lot of time. Now, is it, a, is it an approach if they start with leveraging their DOCSIS back office systems they have to stay with? No. They can keep the investment that they've already made in the DOCSIS, excuse me, in the ITUT OLTs and the ONTs while they transition over to a next generation back office system. What PON architecture approaches are the best for operator aid? From a cable operator perspective, um, so cable operators need to make sure that uh, there's choice in terms of what OLTs uh, they can deploy. Some of the cable operators are placing OLTs in their facilities, their head-ins, uh, their primary hub locations, and then that enables them to run a pa totally passive mm -hmm. optical network. However, that's not going to be available to all operators. One, they may not have enough fibers. And then also, too, the cable operator's distance between their facilities and their customers are a lot longer uh, than many other operators. So those operators that have low fiber density or long distances between subscribers, they may put OLTs in cabinets mm -hmm. or OLTs in node housings that 
are like they do today with DOCSIS and HFC. So it's important that uh, a cable operator makes sh make sure that their system vendor has a choice of different PON OLT systems that they can choose from. And a plus side would be all of those systems run the same operating system and it'd be a modularized, uh, modular operating system that all interface with the existing back office systems. Right. Thank you for joining me Thank today. you very much. I appreciate it. To you. Thank you very much.